Matthew was a 30-year-old gerontosexual man who was misconducted by everyone he knew. Beginning from when he was a young teenager, he frolicked with women way older than him. He got married to a rich old lady and everyone in the community accused him of marrying her for money. What the old woman did later would leave you in shock. Ever since Matthew's unrepentant admiration for older women, usually twice or thrice his age, was discovered by his family, Matthew swore never to get married. It was not because he did not love his relationship with all the older women he went out with, but because his mother always vehemently refused to give her blessings. She gave up trying to dissuade him from these relationships years ago, but she told Matthew she would rather die than see him get married to a woman twice older than she was. Matthew was never bothered about that until he met and fell in love with Martha. The first thing that attracted her to him was his thought of how the first syllable of their names seemed to rhyme. Then, it was Martha's dismissive attitude towards him. Matthew always prided himself in breaking down the walls put up by the elderly women, and he immediately saw Martha O'Donnell as another of his conquests. His escapades with older women began on the night of his 18th birthday. Back then, he was working in a car workshop to save money for college, and before then, he had stayed away from relationships with girls his age. Matthew just never clicked with any of them. To him, they were all whiny, easily jealous, immature, and entitled. On that fateful evening when he met 52-year-old, recently without needling, his heart skipped a beat. He had never felt like that for any of the girls he went out with before. It was then he realized where his preferences lay, and he never looked back since then. Being with Nidaline was everything Matthew ever imagined a relationship should be like. The relationship reeked of maturity, and he admired the elderly woman's experience and undisputed confidence. As he advanced in the relationship escapades, the older his partners got. Matthew ensured the elderly woman knew that he did not belong exclusively to one of them, but he was more than enough for every one of them. To his delight, the women did not display thoughtless jealousy tactics. Many elderly women came after Nidaline and at first try, they were all always scared that he was only toying with them. However, when he kept returning to them, all their fears dissipated. Confused, Matthew's friends would tease him and ask him what he saw in the elderly women. They would even teasingly ask him about his sexual life. Matthew would chuckle as he replied jokingly, I'm probably getting more action than any of you. Plus, I love my women with folds and wrinkles and fine lines. All these were true. Contrary to people's opinions about Matthew's sexual life with the elderly woman, it was going great. The physical side of the relationship was wonderful, and the elderly women even outdo themselves. Matthew, on the other hand, maintains a pace that suits them. It was not a lie that Matthew also enjoyed some benefits from the elderly women. Most of the women were rich, and they always indulged Matthew by spoiling him. While Matthew truly did not date them for the money, he was fine with being spoiled with it. He considered it a sort of reward for satisfying their sexual and social lives. However, things took a new turn when Matthew met Martha. Matthew always knew that his possibility of having a future with any of the elderly women was bleak. But with Martha, it did not matter to him. At first, it seemed like Martha was just one of his conquests. However, the more time he spent with her, the harder he fell in love with her. He met her by coincidence at a restaurant and he has pursued her from then on. Matthew, who never dated less than three elderly women at a time, left them all to follow only Martha. Soon, Martha's heart also began to open up to him. Martha O'Donnell was a real estate mogul, and at 87, her agility remained like that of a 50-year-old. Twice a week, she still went to her office to carefully scrutinize operations. Matthew decided to surprise her one day at her office. By that time, he was well known there so he was let on easily. As he slipped quietly into her office, his heart caught in his throat when he heard her sniffling. He reached out to her and gathered her in his arms. Martha told him how lonely she had been since her husband cheated on her 
and ended their marriage 46 years ago. She refused to get married after that and poured herself into work. Then she lost her only child to a ghastly accident. Martha explained that those were the reasons for staying clear of Matthew at the beginning. Six months after meeting Martha, Matthew proposed to her. Martha could not believe it. Even with her agile body, her health was deteriorating, and Matthew knew that. Yet, he wanted to make the last days of her life the happiest ones. Everyone in the society warned that Matthew was a gold digger. If Martha believed them or not, she did not show it. It was true that she indeed spent a lot of money on Matthew. She shocked everyone later when she made the biggest decision anyone could imagine. Matthew fell in love with Martha's creased face as she smiled and her croaky voice as she threw her head back in laughter. When they were alone, she would dance for him, taking slow, deliberate steps to make him happy. Although Matthew used her money, Martha was always excited whenever he invited her to go on dates. She would change dresses for hours and twirl around like a happy child. On days when her health kept her bedridden, Matthew would stay by her side all day and do everything to make her happy. Whenever she pulls through a sick phase, he would buy her gifts. One time, he bought her a piece of Swarovski earrings and he grinned satisfactorily as Martha jumped all over, dancing like a schoolgirl. How happy she was! Sometimes when she had enough strength, Martha would cook traditional meals for him and feed him off her fingers. To reciprocate, Matthew would also put in all efforts to make homemade meals. He would light romantic, scented candles and play romantic songs. Although the food was always terrible, Matthew was satisfied watching Martha eat bits and tease him about his cooking. Matthew knew within him that Martha was different from all other elderly women he had been with before. One time, he bought her a pair of pajama socks and he watched lovingly as tears streamed down her cheeks. The little things made her happy. It did not even matter to her that he was spending her money. Matthew remembered her strong defiance as they got married against all odds. All she asked Matthew was if he was happy. Matthew defied his mother for her, and that was more than her ex-husband ever did for her in their years of marriage. Matthew wished he had met her earlier. Then maybe they would have enough time together. Unfortunately, fate had other plans. A year after their marriage, Martha died peacefully in her sleep after battling a round of illness. Matthew could not be consoled. He cried his heart out at the loss of the only woman he ever loved. He thought fate would at least give them a few years to spend together. He was not prepared for what Martha left for him in her will. Matthew refused to attend the reading of Martha's will. He spent all day at her grave, grieving. It was until a month after that he found the documents lying on the table he left messy since Martha's death. As he opened the file, a letter with Martha's cursive handwriting fell out. Matthew picked it up shakily and read it over and over again. His eyes widened in shock and he clasped the letter to his chest as the last paragraph of the letter echoed in his mind. Matthew, you are my world, so I leave everything I ever had to you. I lived 89 years, but only two of these years were happy and that's because I had you in it. I don't care that you spend my money, because it's also yours anyway. I have made you the sole owner of all my properties. Even if you threw it all in the gutter, it would not mean anything to me because you gave me life in the last year of my life. I love you forever, my Matt. Sincerely, your Martha. What do you think about this story? Did Matthew deserve what he got in the end?